Hi there, I'm Pastor Toby, lead pastor here at Ignite Church, and I just wanted to say welcome and thank you for being here. You being here is a big deal. Why? Because there are tons of other places you could be right now, but the even bigger deal is that you being here means that you have an interest, a desire to explore and grow in your knowledge about God and the application of His principles. Well, guess what? <laughs> you are in the right place a place of friendship and a place of community. See, here at Ignite, the mission is quite simple. We wanna help people do a few things. Number one, we wanna help people discover a family, realize that they are more than they think they are, and definitely help them become catalysts for positive change in the world. And it would be amazing for you to be a part of that. Now, how do you do that? Number one, get informed. Absolutely, get informed, get all the information you need, visit our website at worshiploveevolve.com. Also, follow us on social media at Ignite Church NYC. Again, that's Ignite Church NYC. Number two, find community. See, a few times a month, we gather together to, to bond, to, to have fun together, to grow. And, and tell you what, consider this a permanent invitation to join us for all our events, live or online, and be a part of the community. Number three, get involved. Let me tell you, God can use anybody to make a difference for anybody. And we believe that no matter where you are in your journey of faith or relationship with God, you can make a meaningful contribution to help build a community. In fact, what we found out is that getting involved with running things and helping the community actually helps your growth in your relationship with God. So hop on our website at worshiploveevolve.com and hit the join the team button to find ways you can be a part of building the community. So you're probably thinking, so what's our thing? Like what's our thing, right? It's simple. We are on a journey to worship, to love, and to evolve. Let me break that down. We want to worship God in the most meaningful and authentic way we can we want to grow in our love for God, which helps us grow in a healthy love for our own selves. And then that ultimately helps us to grow in love for people around us. Then we want to evolve. Basically, we don't just want to go through the motions of doing church, okay? We want to grow. We want to change for the better. We want to be challenged in our thinking and inspired to improve in areas of our lives that are in line with the Word of God. We want to be able to look back and say, wow, I've come a long way in my relationship with God, in my behavior and in my life outcomes. That, that's what we want. So that's who we are. And uh, look, we know you're going to love it here. And we are so, so, so pumped, so grateful that you have us and we have you to do life with. See you next time. To the fullness of His love
everything together and watch the shatter. I stood tall and I have crumbled in the same breath. I have wrestled and I have trembled towards surrender. Just my heart a drift and drift and hold again. Plenty of blessing to Your 
of love is who you are It's a grace I can never add up To be somebody you still want Somehow You love me as you find me Hey fam, welcome to another time of prayer. Um, before I go forward, I just want to give a big shout out to Tolu and the band. Um, there is no being in the presence of God without you first. And we thank you for um, the time and effort and the zeal and the passion that you put in, you know, worshiping God and just ushering us into the presence of God. Uh, God bless you. Um, some of the things that God has been dealing with me about is the place of obedience. And, and I'm just going to share a, a scripture verse with you guys. Um, if you have a time, please read into it. It's found in the book of 1 Samuel, verse 15. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 1 through 31. I'm just going to tell you a quick story about this. Uh, it's about Saul when God spoke to him through Samuel to go and destroy the uh, Amalekites. And he said, God said, destroy everything from the women to the children, to the kings, to the flocks, everything. Do not leave anything behind. However, Saul went there and he destroyed most of the things. Um, and he, he captured the king and it took the, he took the best of flocks and the best of rams and and everything that he to him seemed the best, uh, all in the name that he wants to worship God with them. And if you read into it, God never said, leave some of the things behind. No, he said, destroy everything. So, and in the long run, uh, Saul lost everything and also lost his kingdom to David. And like I said, uh, God has been dealing with me in a place of obedience. And I don't know about you, but I have had a fair share of being passionately obeying God in the things that he has called me to do. And, and while reading that scripture, and God laid something on my heart that in order for me to experience the full extent of his power and of his grace, I will have to be fully devoted to obeying him. I don't know about you. Partially obeying God is another form of disobedience. And so that struck my heart and, you know, like I said, I've suffered my fair share of it um, and I've experienced the consequences of partially obeying him. And today, I, I don't know if you're in that position and I know some of us might be in that position, uh, but if you're in that position, I would like you to pray this prayer with me. First, we, we're going to ask God for mercy um, because the scripture says that obedience is better than sacrifice. And Saul understood that he had disobeyed God by partially obeying God. And he wanted to sacrifice the best of calf, the best of flocks, the best, best of rams that he has captured during battle. And that is where that scripture came from in the book of Psalms, first Sam, first Samuel uh, 15, 1 through 31. You will find that obedience is better than sacrifice. Um, let us just ask God for mercy in every way, in every part of our life, in every part of our life that we have partially obeyed, obeyed him by disobeying him. Amen. 
Heavenly Father, we just thank you for a moment like this in your presence. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your love. And Father, I have sinned against you just like my brothers and sisters, just like many others, impartially obeying you, at the same time disobeying you. And I confess of my sins of disobedience in what you have told me to do times and times again. And I ask for your mercy this day. You are a God of compassion. You are a God of mercy. Saul never got to enjoy that mercy because he lost his kingdom overall. And Father, in every way that we have lost things that you have given, glory, grace, mercy, that you have, we have lost it out of disobedience, out of partial obedience, oh God, that we have lost it to the hands of the enemy. Father, we are praying for your mercy to reclaiming them in the name of Jesus. And we bless your holy name. We we sought your mercy today, O oh God. And we bless your holy name, Daddy. Amen. Um, another prayer that we, I would like us to pray about is that we should ask God to give us the grace to be bold enough to obey him, to be able to carry things through. Um, Towards the end of the scripture, towards the end of that um, Bible verse, uh, Saul said something that kind of caught my attention. And he said that, oh, I lost, I, I did what I did because I was afraid of the soldiers. God, Saul is, is the king of Israel, and yet he's afraid of his army. And he decided to do what he did. Why? Because he's trying to live up to the standards of others. I don't know about you, but I have been caught in that place where in order to satisfy others, I had to passionately obey God. And I don't know about you, but I have seen graves like that. I didn't have the boldness to do what is necessary. So let us just ask God for grace and, and the boldness to do that which he has asked us to do. And Heavenly Father, we thank you, O oh God. And, and Father, we bless your holy name and we give you all glory and all honor. This race is for the swift, O oh God. And Father, in every way that we have sinned against you, we ask for mercy. And at the same time, Lord, we are praying for the grace and, and the boldness to carry out that which you have instructed us to do, your instructions, your commandment. God, the vision that you have given us. A lot of us are wallowing right now. A lot, a lot of us are, are struggling right now because we have partially obeyed you, oh God. Because we have not fully devoted ourselves to obeying what you have called us to do. And Father, we pray for your mercy today. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Um, and lastly, we are going to pray for our country. Um, we're just going to pray for our country, our leaders. Um, the pandemic has how they are handling it. And we just, let us just pray that God will give our leaders the wisdom and, and the understanding in carrying out his intention for his people. And we're also going to pray that they uh, uh, fall into a place of obedience. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God. When we, we commit our leaders and our country before you. And we pray, O oh God, that you will touch our leaders, O oh God, that, that they will succumb themselves, O oh God, to your understanding, to your will. That they will succumb themselves, O oh God, to obedience, Lord. And they will lead your people as they ought to, O oh God. And we need you, Lord. We need you in our country. 
We need you all over the world to heal our land, Lord. We bless your holy name, Father. We thank you, Jesus. Thank you for answered prayers. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Hey, folks. Welcome to service. Good to have you here. Pastor Toby here. And I'm super thrilled that you're here with us today. Much to cover, much to talk about. I'm really excited about the series that we're starting again uh, now. It's a two-part series that's titled Rebuilding Walls. This is really, really, really important. And I just... I can't wait to share it with you. I, I, I've learned so much in the last few days getting ready for this, and I know that it's going to bless you. Uh, let's pray before we get into this, right? Uh, God, we thank you so much for today. Thank you for the, another opportunity to learn at your feet, another opportunity to, to grow, to, to learn new things, to learn deeper things about ourselves and about you. We ask, oh God, that as this happens today, God, that you open our hearts, that we might see and behold just awesome things about your word of God in Jesus name. Amen. 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 So let's get into it again. The sermon series, the title is rebuilding walls. Part one today is survived, but broken, survived, but broken. The context for our story, for our talk, for our sermon today comes from the book of Nehemiah and the story of Nehemiah. You might be familiar with that story. The walls of Jerusalem are in ruins. Nehemiah is the guy who galvanizes everyone to rebuild the wall. And the wall is fabulous. It's rebuilt. I mean, it's and it's done in record time. I mean, it's a it's perfect. It's a great story. But there's a lot to uncover. There's a lot to, to take away uh, that we can apply both to our lives and pretty much every area of life. So I'm going to start from uh, Nehemiah chapter 1, verse 1 to 4. Read some verses of scripture and then we'll talk about this and, and get some stuff out of it, right? Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 1 to 4, it reads as such. Now it happened in the month of Chislev, in the 20th year of the Persian king, as I was in the capital of Susa. Hanani, one of my brothers, and some men from Judah came, and I asked them about the surviving Jews who had escaped and survived the captivity, right? So a lot of people had, you know, it was, it was it, people were taken into captivity, people scattered all over the place. A, a, a few people remain, right? So Nehemiah is asking, yeah, how, how are things back home? How, how, how are those folks doing? Okay, verse 3. They said to me, the remnant there in the province who survived the captivity are in great distress and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down and its fortified gates have been burned, destroyed by fire. Now, Nehemiah was not expecting to get all of that, right? You ever have that conversation with someone like, we, we do it all the time. Like, hey, how you doing? Good, 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 good. That's what we expect, right? And and, and, and we know better, right, at, at Ignite, right? Like, when you say, how you doing, right, we want to, we really want to know, right? And so when, when those moments come, make sure you're paying attention. But Nehemiah was caught off guard because the very next verse says, now when it came, it came to pass, uh, when I heard these words, I sat down and I wept and mourned for days. And I was fasting and praying before the God of heaven. I mean, Nehemiah was so shook. I mean, these words just, I mean, it, it was a lot. Because he wasn't expecting that. He wasn't expecting that. He, 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 it, it just broke him. So the story goes that Nehemiah went to the king because he's a servant of the king, right? Uh, in this new land. He goes to the king. The king's like, yo, Nehemiah, what's up, man? What, why are you looking all down? Nehemiah's like, what? You, Yo, let me tell you, king, praise to the king, right? but I am sad because my hometown, my home country is in ruins right now. Can I please go and rebuild this wall and get things back in order? King's like, yeah, yeah, sure, man. Take whatever you need, we, you know, we, we, however I can support. Then man is like, yes, heads out on the journey and and they, they build the wall. It's record time. It, it's it's a great story. But again, here, here are some of the things that we can extract from this, right? First of all, we got to establish what is the significance of that wall? I mean, why was that wall so important that Nehemiah wept, broke down in tears, went into mourning, right? And mourning, this wasn't a mourning of like somebody passed, but a mourning of a previous experience. You ever been in that situation before where you're mourning, not necessarily somebody passing, but you're mourning a past life? Mourning a past relationship that didn't work. Mourning a past period in your life when you were financially okay, but you're not longer financially. You're no longer financially okay. Mourning a period in your life when you had 
you know, maybe maybe you had a lot of friends, but now you you don't feel like you have a lot of friends. Like like in mourning. In fact, a lot of people in 2020 have been mourning the past because like 2020 just came. And it's like bam 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 bam. bam. <laughs> like, this is what kind of feels like is happening in 2020. So it's like you're looking back in the past, like wow, that's what Nehemiah was doing. He was mourning. So what is that? What is that? What do the walls mean to us? Because that signifies to me that that wall was critical. That wall was important. That wall was significant to cause Nehemiah to mourn and to weep. Your, what does it mean for you to have your Jerusalem walls? What are your Jerusalem walls? See, those walls signify those things that surrounded the city. It surrounded the city. It protected the city. It offered protection. It offered structure. It offered a defense mechanism. It offered a way to control things, okay? So maybe you have some walls, like your, your marriage. Maybe your marriage is a Jerusalem wall in your life. Maybe your finances, your money is a Jerusalem wall. You feel like a sense of protection, control over your life, a sense of security. Maybe maybe your creative work, right? Your ability to be creative, right? That's your, that's your Jerusalem wall. Maybe it's your health. You just as a fit as a as an oak tree you just you just you just going like that that's just that's your security bell like as long as you can get to the gym you're great i might i might need to i might need to take some advice there and you know follow your foot footsteps but that's a sermon for another day right whatever it is we all have jerusalem walls we all have these things that are that are, are sort of our security blankets and for our walls to come crashing down it means that those things that we we we, we, we depend on for some sense of security some sense of stability comes crashing down. That's the context here, right? And, and, and the thing is, many of us, many of us have survived some crazy situations, but we came out broken. Like we, we survived it, but we're broken by it. We survived the experience, but we're broken by it. Jerusalem survived, but it was completely broken. Maybe your finances survived, but it was broken, right? What are some of those things that, that, that you can relate to in terms of like, wow, like, like I went through this, I survived it, Pastor Toby, but, uh, but yo, I feel broken. Maybe you survived your childhood, but your adulthood is feeling the, the, the effect of that. How about that, right? Yeah, you, some of you can tell stories for days about your childhood. Maybe you survived a dysfunctional home, but your home is feeling the scars right now. Maybe maybe your, your your childhood home, your childhood home, there was some dysfunction there, but now your adult home is feeling the pain of that. Maybe you survived abuse and now you're dealing with trust issues, right? You survived it, but you come out broken out of it, right? Anyone in that kind of situation before? Maybe you survived a bad relationship and now something in you just snapped after that relationship. You ever did that before? Hey, I will never be that hurt ever again. It's like you survived it, you came out. Okay, if most people see you, they would never know you survived that kind of relationship before. But something in you snapped in that moment. You survived it, but you came out broken. You survived moments in your current relationship, right? You're still in the relationship. You you survived some things that happened in the past, but that relationship is broken. Like it survived it, but it's not the same. It survived it, but it's broken. Maybe you survived a bad boss, right? And now you're just cynical about leadership. Anytime you're in a situation where you're being led by somebody else, you're just like, yeah, die. no, just tell me what to do and I'm out of here, I'm out of your hair, right? Maybe you survived a loss of income, but you're still discouraged about your life. You're not totally poor or like on the streets or whatever, but it's like, yo, like, man, like that, those were the glory days right there. Maybe you survived sickness, but your body is broken. Like you, you, like you, you're still, your body is, it, it hasn't, it, it never fully recovered. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Like, like the, the walls, the, the walls, Jerusalem survived, but it was broken. Are you in a situation right now where you survived something, but you're broken? Are, are you in a position right now, maybe in 2020, you're like, yeah, looks like I'm surviving, I'm surviving this stuff, but like, yo, like my life has changed completely. The walls are down. Your defense system is down. Your security blanket is off. Your sense of control is rattled. If you're that in that situation, let me tell you, I can relate because there's areas of my life right now where I'm like, God, you you are need you are going to need to step into this. Relief comes though in Second Corinthians chapter four, verse seven to nine. I love this. I'm just going to inject this into 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 the sermon real quick, and then we'll get back to Nehemiah. He says. But we have this treasure in jars of clay 
to show what, what treasure? The treasure of the knowledge of our salvation. That this, this, this spirit of God that God has given us through our salvation. We have this, this treasure in jars of clay, this broken vessel, right? Remember, we're talking about brokenness, right? In your broken state, in your broken state spiritually, God still invested in that broken state and, and, and put treasure into that broken state. I, 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 somebody even maybe have cut this already. Maybe, maybe you cut this already, right? Even in your broken state, there's value. Come on, somebody. Even in your broken state, there is value. Here we go. Ver verse 7. Still verse 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7 and 9. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this is that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard pressed on every side, but we are not crushed. Oh, this is a this is a prayer for somebody. We are perplexed, but we are not in despair. We are persecuted, but we are not abandoned. We are struck down, but we are not destroyed. Jerusalem was struck down. It seemed like nothing good could come out of it again, but something was still there. It still had value. It was persecuted, but it was not abandoned because somebody like Nehemiah said, you know what? There's still value there. I'm going to go over there and, and figure this out. Verse 16 of that same second Corinthians chapter 4 says, therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory, watch this, that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary and what is unseen is eternal. It's so important for us. What this scripture is telling us is that, look, there, things may look bad on the outside, but even though things are bad on the outside, there can be an opportunity for a renewing on the inside. Now, back to this story of Nehemiah, right? And we're just going to focus on the first like three chapters of this. There's so much more, but we'll probably get there in the, in, in the next part. So in, in, in chapter two, Nehemiah gets permission and heads out and starts to do this, this work. I mean, he is, he is trying to get this thing done. Now, here's the first lesson I want us to really take out of this, this sermon, out of this story. Very critical lesson. Number one, no matter how broken your walls may be, you should rebuild. No matter how broken your walls may be, you ought to rebuild. You ought to not give up. Look, Nehemiah, this is thunder lightning out there, right? Nehemiah, Nehemiah could have just mourned. Think about the scripture that we read again. The Bible says that, 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 that Nehemiah asked those people, how is how is the remnant? How is how is Jerusalem doing? He gets hit with my goodness, Nehemiah. Everything is in shambles. You would not believe, bro. Everything is broken. The walls are down. Everything is destroyed by fire. The Bible says Nehemiah wept and mourned for days and prayed. But guess what? He didn't stop there. How many things have you been through in life that you you stopped at mourning? You are stuck in the morning phase when you ought to be mourning and then doing. Nehemiah mourned for days. It wasn't like he ignored the situation. He didn't not feel his pain. He felt that pain, but he went and he did something about it. He committed to rebuild it. Some of us have been through things in our lives that we're just like, what is the point? What is the point trying again? What is the point putting in effort again into this? What is the point rising up again, putting resources in, putting my mind, risking getting hurt again, risking getting let down again, risking disappointment again? That's a very, very critical point. These walls were desolate. I mean, they were bad enough to make Nehemiah just break down and cry like a child. And yet he decided, he decided to go rebuild that wall. I don't know what walls you need to rebuild. I don't know what area of your life ought to be rebuilt right now, but I'm, I'm just here to tell you that, yeah, it's okay to mourn. It's okay to think, wow, it, it was great before. Man, if I didn't miss that opportunity, man, if I didn't go through that trauma, man, if I didn't go through that relationship, man, if I didn't suffer that loss, whatever that was, but, but it, even though I did, I am going to continue. I'm going to rebuild it. I'm going to go get back to where it was and make that better. You ought to do it, no matter how bad things are. What area of your life are you brief? Are you feeling broken? That you, you you feel so broken that you will not rebuild. Snap out of it right now. You deserve 
everything that's great that God has planned for you, you ought to rebuild. You can rebuild. Take this encouragement right now and just know, I don't know what that area is, but I believe that somebody in here needed to hear that word. You ought to rebuild. No matter how bad, no matter how broken the walls are, you ought to rebuild. Here's number two. The state of your brokenness is often a great opportunity to rebuild what really matters. The state of your brokenness is often a great opportunity to rebuild in your life what really truly matters. The wall was rebuilt, yes. But beyond the wall, something happened to the people of Jerusalem. Think about it for a moment. The wall is desecrated. The gates are broken. Everything is destroyed by fire. The city is left in ruins. In fact, when people describe what's happening to Nehemiah, they describe such a bleak situation that he falls down and just cries. That's how bad things were. Now, imagine the state of mind of the people who are there. Imagine the lack of encouragement. Imagine the, desperate, the, the, the deep frustration. Every day they wake up and they just see the walls. Is there an area of your life where every day you wake up and there it is staring at, right at you? Is there a situation in your life where every day you wake up and there it is the reminder that it's not fixed? There is the reminder that, it, that there's a problem. Here, are you in a situation, oh, somebody needs to hear this word. So is somebody in a situation where every day you get up, whether it's a pain in your body, whether it's your, your, your bank account, whether it's your emotions, or whether it's your, it's your lack of energy to face the day, whether it's your memories from trauma you've been through, and, and you wake up in the morning and there is the problem right there. That was the state of mind of the people of Jerusalem. It was bad. It was bad. And so, and so, and so, here's the point. We just made that point, right? The state of your brokenness is an opportunity to fix, to rebuild what really matters. Where I'm going with this is that Nehemiah chapter 3 happened. And we won't go into, uh, in, in, into reading the whole chapter because the whole chapter it has one narrative, one single point. And if you read Nehemiah chapter 3, that's homework for you. Just go, just go try it out. You will see, take into con in consideration the, the state of mind of the people. Desperate, frustrated, depressed, staring at the problem all day, and one by one, they started to come together. The Bible would say, and this family started rebuilding this part of the wall, and right next to them, somebody else started rebuilding that part. And then right next to them, somebody else re started rebuilding that part. And boom, 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 boom. There, it, it seemed like, like this, 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 this effect started to happen, this roller coaster effect. Right, starts to happen, right? People just start to come together alongside. It just started with one person, start with Nehemiah, and then one person, and then one person, and slowly but surely, the entire operation took off. It was incredible. Nehemiah chapter 3 is absolutely nuts, right? Next to each other, people just started coming up, volunteering, and making this thing happen. The point is, the point is, the state of the, the, the heart of the country, of, of Jerusalem, was healed, and that heart is even more important than the wall. Yes, the wall was rebuilt, but the heart was rebuilt as well. Do you, do, do you catch that? Like, the, what, like what, what part of the things that really, I mean, it was important to rebuild the wall, of course. Yeah, sense of security, security blankets, sense of control, everything is great. Those things, those external things, those visible things, those visible things, those visible things, those visible things need to be rebuilt, absolutely. But, but those, those spiritual things, those deeper things, those matters of the heart, they need to be rebuilt as well. This is not just about having you go out there and fix all the areas of your life that you don't think are, are, are going great. What I'm trying to get at here is that it is important, just like the Jerusalem had its physical walls rebuilt, they also had their emotional, their mental, their heart, their spiritual walls rebuilt as well. Seeing each other, working right next to each other, having that inspiration and encouragement, like, wow, wow, we're, we're doing this together, like, we're getting re-inspired. That stuff was important for them. This wasn't just about laying bricks. It was about healing of the heart. And I don't know what area of your life needs this. I don't know what area of your life has been broken where you survived something, but you're broken. It's not just about fixing that area so you can look the way it looked before. It's about fixing your heart towards that issue. 
So is, is, it the, is it the childhood issue? Is it the childhood trauma? Is it the family background? Is it the job situation, your career situation? Is it your health issue? Have you, have you gotten to a point where because of your health, you've just, you've, just, you've just lost? I mean, there's a way you talk now, there's a way you are now that just doesn't, that doesn't speak joy. Have you lost money? Have, have, you, have you lost health? Have you lost relationships? Have, I mean, what is the thing in your life that you survived but are broken and you're trying to fix that area without fixing your heart? You gotta fix your heart. You gotta fix the, the deeper things, the, the deeper things that need to be rebuilt as well. So as you rebuild your life, what is really going to re- uh, be important to rebuild? You know those things. You know those things. Some of you, some of you, and this just this just came to mind. You you, you survived the relationship, but you have not forgiven the person. You survived the physical trauma, but you haven't forgiven yourself. You made a mistake about something, you survived it, you came out broken mentally or spiritually limping, but you have not forgiven the people in that circumstance. I mean, do you get what I'm saying? So it's really important that as you're you're rebuilding your walls, that the things that make you feel comfortable, it's important that you rebuild and you reestablish that heart. You rebuild the heart. I will never hurt like that again. I will never make such a bad decision again. Take it easy. Take it easy. Happens to the best of us. You made the decisions based on the information and the person you were back then. Forgive yourself. Forgive yourself. And don't take this out on the new people who are trying to come into your life. I mean, we can go on and on and on and on about this. The point is, as you are rebuilding your wall, as you're rebuilding those areas, as you're you're going back to the drawing board to rebuild, to get back on the horse, to, to, to revisit that lost passion, whatever that was, it's important that you ensure that you rebuild the really important parts of that that actually need to be rebuilt. Here's the third thing. Here's the third thing. Rebuild the walls, but don't forget the gates. Rebuild the walls, don't forget the gates. Still back to Nehemiah chapter 3. A lot of things were happening there. It's like it's like we started seeing this like this, this like effect happening, right? Somebody started building, and then right next to that person, somebody else started building, and somebody else started building. But if you look closer in that scripture, what you will find is that some people were rebuilding the walls, and some people were rebuilding the gates. Some people were rebuilding the walls, and some people were rebuilding the gates. Now, let me explain this. Let me explain this, okay? Um, hmm, 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 hmm. Some things happen to us that cause us to have walls, to build walls up. Walls of defense, walls of control, walls of this is my universe, I gotta control that. No problem, it's cool, it's cool, build your wall, okay? Just don't forget the gates, why? Because the gates is actually what allows for movement. Oh man, if you are a city without gates, sure, you'll keep the bad stuff from coming in, but you'll also keep the good stuff from coming in too. If you are a city without gates, with just a big, nice wall, what you will have is a situation where, it's, where you will keep the bad from going out, but you will keep the good from going out too. You need gates. Sure, you still need parameters, you still need control, you still need, you still need to be intelligent and, and intentional about how you live your life, but if you are building up walls and, and, and you're trying to rebuild the wall, either build or rebuild walls, and you don't have gates, gates are the opportunities that you have to let good in and to let good out. Because a river that doesn't flow out is stagnant. Things die in there. A city that doesn't have a a system where where people can leave and come and and go freely is a prison. Yo, do you see that? Do you see that? So what, so you gotta make sure as as you are building or rebuilding your walls, as you are going back in there and saying, you know what, I am going to continue to consider how to make, how to get back on, how to, how to pursue those things that I really wanted to pursue, how to heal myself, how to get back to how things are. I'm not going to give up on my dreams and aspirations. I'm not going to give up on that relationship. I'm not going to give, as you rebuild those walls, as you rebuild your career, as you rebuild your body, whatever it is, you got to rebuild the gates as well. You can't build the walls and forget the gates. Otherwise, you are building a prison for yourself. 
I know you're trying to protect yourself so that you're never, you never return back to that situation ever again. I will never make that mistake ever again. I will never let that kind of person near me ever again. I will never take that kind of job ever again. No problem. No problem. Just make sure you got gates. Just make sure you got, you, 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 you're not building a situation where all you have is walls of, walls of defense that, so that you're hunkered in your own little world. Things happen to us, cause us to build walls. We just can't forget to build the gates. So what parts of your life have you survived, but you're limping from? What, what, what have you survived that has changed you for the worse? I mean, this is a very deep question. I mean, I, I just, I mean, if I could suggest to you after service today, take some time and just spend some time, spend some time with yourself. <laughs> spend your time with yourself. I mean, just, you know, have a conversation. Just, uh, you know, just lock yourself in the bathroom and, and, and have a thought, right? What are, some, what are the things you've survived? And the thing is, if you're not really intentional about this, the way our minds work is that, is that sometimes we lock these things away. We lock these things away into the back where we don't engage, we don't want to talk about it, we don't want to think about it because it was just a dirty, nasty experience. It was just a bad thing. But did it change you? Did you, you survived, I get it. But are you broken? And if you are broken, if you are broken, the, the, Bible, the Bible says that we have Jesus to lay that burden down at his feet. We have Jesus to offload that burden, and that burden needs to be offloaded, yo. You can't go on with that. You can't go, yeah, you got to rebuild. You got to rebuild the things that matter, and you got to build not just walls, but gates. Three critical things. But as you're doing this, there is a weight on your shoulders where you survived it. You survived it, but you're broken. You survived it, but you're broken. So we're all a bunch of broken people, broken in our past, trying to claw towards a future. But along the way, you, you got to make sure that you're, ca you're not carrying burdens from the past. Because if you're trying to build a wall, if you're trying to build a new wall, if you're trying to build, if you're trying to rebuild your city, but with, with, with burnt stuff and, 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 and stuff that's happened in the past, you can't build it. You can't build right. You can't build right. So what do we do? What's the answer? we got to lay these burdens at the feet of Jesus. I love this. Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. Says, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Why? Because my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You gotta, you gotta, the the weight you are carrying from the past, from the past, from the past. The stuff that, that yes, you survived, but you have this, this bag over your shoulders of all the remnants, all the, all the things you survived. It's, it, broke, it, it, it broke you. It broke, and it may be hard to admit. Maybe may be hard to admit, but it, it did something. Oh yeah, it did something. That, that event in your marriage that happened whenever ago, yeah, you, your marriage survived it, you're still together, but uh, it's, mm, it's just, it's not the same. It's not the same. You got sick that one time. You survived it. Mm, it's just something. Is, something is still off. Something is still off. You were in that relationship. It was great. You broke up. It's done. But now you're taking that baggage into new relationships. Or some relationships didn't work. And now you're here with trust issues in new relationships. Right? I mean, think we are, we are broken and we got to lay these burdens down. Because as you rebuild your Jerusalem walls, it's important that on the way from ruin to rebuilding, you lay burdens down. Lay burdens down. Psalm 55, verse 22. says, cast your burden on the Lord, and he shall sustain you. He shall never permit the righteous to be moved. That's where we end today. That's where we end today. I don't know what burdens you're carrying. I don't know what has... What, ha what you've survived, but has broken you. But I encourage you today to take those burdens and lay them at the feet of Jesus. And then, once you do that, once you truly lay those burdens down, once you really go to Christ, and you have, you have one of those lay down your burden conversations like, God, I cannot carry this on my own. I am not that strong, right, to deal with all those things. 
and to live a life that glorifies you where I'm winning, I need your help, you will get the grace you need to rebuild your Jerusalem walls in record time. In, 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 I mean, God can do such a work in your life that you'll be able to look back and say, wow, the, I, with this new wall, I would have never thought that it was once broken. God can renew you like never before. God can bring you back up to a place where you are admired, where you can look at your life and say, wow, God did that. But it begins, it begins by laying down your burdens. It begins by laying down your burdens. Let's pray. Let's pray. God, thank you. Mm. <laughs> thank you that we survived those moments. Ooh, people have stories to tell, God. Ah, the people have stories for days. The things we've been through, that we're grateful we survived. But Lord, the truth of the matter is that those things, they did a number on us. They, God, if we're keeping things 100% honest, we're not the same person. We're not the same person. And so God, today we understand that in order to really move forward, in order to really rebuild the walls in a way that needs to be re that it needs to be rebuilt, we need to lay our burdens down. We need to stop at the feet of Jesus and say, here's the reality of what has happened. God, I need your help. And so, God, we pray for everyone under the sound of my voice right now. We ask, oh God, for a healing. We ask, oh God, for encouragement. We ask, oh God, for the grace to lay down those burdens so that we can be lighter and refreshed and inspired to rebuild the walls. For God, we know that once you help us, once, once we have you in our corner to rebuild the walls, God, those walls will be better, stronger, even more glorious than they were before. All the things that give us security, all the things that give, that give us a sense of control, all the things that made us feel secure, Lord, we lay all those burdens, all of the pressure, we lay those things down at your feet, God, and we walk day by day in you and with you. Because we know that with you leading, we are going to end up in a secure place anyway. So all the personal pressure of trying to, trying to create our lives, God, how about this? How about you help us discover the life that you want us to live? Instead of ha uh, uh, us having to create and, and, and imagine what that should look like and what our sense of security and structure and control should be, God, how about you help us just discover what you have already done, what you've already set? And help us to rest in that. This we ask for, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Church, I love you. God bless you. See you next time. A great, like, every time I feel like we get somewhere and we're like, the sermon is hitting all the points and hitting everything. It just, like, goes way way above the bar like i hope you guys have as many pointers and as many things in your head as i do from that sermon so right now we're going to move on to announcements first and foremost if this is your first time worshiping with us i just want to say you are more than welcome here you are officially a part of the ignite family so all i'm going to ask you to do is fill out the form in the chat the same form can also be found on our website at worshiploveevolve.com. Basically, it gives us your details so we can stay in touch with you and add you to our family. Every Sunday, we have our connect room after service, and it's going to happen immediately after this service as well. So don't miss that. It's basically a time to connect. I mean, with families, as we are it's easy to get lost in your day to day and forget to check up on each other or to catch up. So this is a good time to do that. And also like talk about the sermon. Our social media pages are at Ignite Church NYC for both Facebook and Instagram. They're really pretty, but um, one of the main things that they do is to give you the most up to date information about what we're doing where we're going and things that we're praying for and just things like that in general. So definitely give us a follow. I promise you it is a good, good scroll. Yes, I said that last week and I will say it again. Go through the social media page. <laughs> Every Tuesday at 9 p.m. EST, we have our prayer call. The essence of prayer as Christians cannot be emphasized enough. Like we need to pray, we need to continue to do this. So even if you can't make the prayer call at the time, you could always send us a DM as to what your prayer point is, or you could go to our website, once again, worshiploveevolve.com and fill out a prayer form. And we will definitely, definitely 
be praying for you. Every two weeks or so, we have our family night, which is basically chill it ignite style. That's basically what we come to do. You are always invited to do this. And for most up-to-date information, yes, follow our social media pages and we will tell you when, where, and how we are doing our family night. I don't have any more announcements, but I just want to say I am so excited to have you here and I am so excited to do life with you. Right, so now we're going to move on to the giving portion of our service today. I don't have my big Bible, um, but there's a song that's been ringing in my head this whole week. It's by Ron Kanoe, and I know that the lyrics are taken from Luke 6, 38. It says, give and it will come back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. And when I, I mean, the imagery in that song is so rich and so full, but when I think about it, when I really think about it, I imagine like grain in a cup and you trying to press it down and trying to make sure it fits into a one cup measurement and it just keeps on like, it just can't. There's just so much that it can't. And so I want you to give with that mentality, with that image in your mind that God has said, when you give, it comes back to you. When you give with the right mindset, it comes back to you. So um, you could text a number on the screen next to me. I'm not sure which side is going to be on, but you could definitely check text that number or go to our website at worshiploveevolve.com. And I really want to pray over everything that you're giving, over every thought that you're having about giving, over every thought that you're having in general, that the Lord guides you and he keeps you and he orders your steps in the right way to go. I also pray that he blesses you and blesses you with everything that he has for you. In Jesus' mighty, lovely, amazing name, we pray. I hope that as you are giving, you are blessed. Wow, that was amazing. So much to take away from all that. In fact, I encourage you to do just that. Take some time, take some time Reflect on everything you've learned, everything you've heard, and everything you've experienced. Really take the time to do that. Well, folks, that brings us to the end of service. And let me tell you, once again, I just, I, I'm just so happy that you were here today. It was good to have you, and we hope that you are walking away inspired, walking away with more knowledge, maybe challenged, but hopefully, hopefully you're walking away with a deeper connection with God, with with, with more connection with God and that relationship. If you missed the announcements, don't worry. They're going to loop around again in just a few minutes. So just hang tight uh, for that. Now, at this point in the service, I'm going to pray to close us out. But ho ho hold on. Before before I do that, I want, to, I want to pray for a special group. I want to pray for anyone who felt a nudge, some kind of nudge to, to maybe get closer to God. Maybe you felt a nudge to reach out and, and, and lean in to what God might be saying to you. Maybe you had a nudge to consider or maybe reconsider having an authentic relationship with Christ. I want to pray for you. If that's you, I want to just, just go ahead and put your hand on your chest. Now, don't worry about who is around you, who is not around you, who is there, who is not there. Just concentrate on this super meaningful event and just repeat these words after me as I lead you in this prayer, okay? So don't worry about anybody else, just, just focus on this, okay? Dear Jesus, I want you. For real, I, I want all the amazing things that come with having a relationship with you. I want what you want from me. I recognize that submitting to you does not mean that I lose out on things, but rather it means that I gain. Yeah, I gain. I gain everything that comes with you. I gain peace. I gain the joy. I gain the change in my character. And most importantly, I gain the gift of eternal life. Come into my heart, Jesus. Take over. Change me from the inside out. And let my life inspire others and bring you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. On that note, 
congratulations if that if, if that was you congratulations and welcome to the family we want you to know that you're not alone and and we're here we're here for you through this journey you're gonna have questions how do I do this how do I live this out we love that stuff so reach out let us know if we can be of any assistance there okay so let's pray to close out the service God we just thank you so much for this service thank you for everything that you've done thank you for the people who worked hard to put this together Thank you for the people who showed up to experience it. It's a beautiful cycle that, that people are appreciating what the effort that, that was put into this and that people who put in the effort have a meaningful, they were able to contribute in a meaningful way to other people. Most importantly, thank you because we did this for you and, and that you are taking all the glory. We appreciate you, God. We bless this week. We bless this day. We bless our families. Take all the glory, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you all and see you next time.